Hey everyone, so today I wanted to go over the DC Universe animated movie, The Death of Superman, which it's been out for a little while and I've actually seen it before, but with the sequel, Reign of the Superman, coming out this week, I kind of wanted to refresh my mem memory on it. Now, a little backstory on this is that the original Death of Superman storyline came out in 92, and I was, uh, I was in grade school. It was right after I'd first got into comic books and it was a huge ordeal. I mean, it was all over the media and me being that age, I didn't know that superheroes died and came back to life all the time. So anyways, I remember exactly the day that it came out was a Tuesday and I made my mom go leave school and go pick up the comic book for me. And I was just, I was so thrilled. I just wanted to see what happened. You know, for weeks it had been building up. It, it actually was, it started in one of the other Superman comics. There was several at the time. And it built, there was a storyline, I think maybe five different issues where it built up. Um, which is, in the movie, it kind of happens this way too. It's not just one big battle. It does, uh, it does go over, you know, several miles away from Metropolis. And that's one thing about the movie that I thought was really good. But anyways, at the time, like I said, it was just a huge ordeal. And then, of course, he came back. But, you know, the less said about the Superman mullet, the better. So anyways, with this movie, I think DC did a really fantastic job on it. I've actually liked most of the DC movies. I know a lot of people are not crazy about some of them, but you know, for the most part I like them. I think they're pretty solid. I look forward to watching them. It brings a lot of the storylines that I grew up reading to life, and I think that's kind of neat. If this movie uh, was what Batman vs. Superman could have been, I really don't think we would have had that many people complaining about Batman vs. Superman. I didn't per se hate it, but, you know, the the ending is a little, you know, whatever. But, so anyways, this is not, definitely not the first time that Doomsday has been included in the Superman stories. There's been several times. There's been a movie before this, you know, obviously Batman vs. Superman. There was even that really disappointing version on Smallville, which, eh, you know, Smallville had his issues. So anyways, this movie is in the New 52 Universe version of the animated uh, universe of movies that DC has out. So it's a little bit different than the comic book, but I think at the same time it gets a lot of things right. It, you know, it has a lot of the action, it has a lot of the build up to it. Although one different thing from the comic book to this is that in 92, the Justice League of America at that time was kind of a B team. I liked it, and I've always been a fan of it, and I think it's because I read that one first, but your heavy hitters were not on the team. Wonder Woman, Batman, Cyborg, Flash, Green Lantern, Hawkman, they were not a part of it. This was a B team, but, you know, I really always liked that those storylines. So anyways, they've substituted that out. Now, one thing I did like that they brought from the comics that I don't think any of the movies any of the TV series, anything that has dealt with Doomsday before it did, was they kept his containment suit. Now in the comics, that was a big deal because you really didn't know what he looked like, and basically every issue, you know, he'd lose a little bit of the containment suit here or there. You really didn't know what a monster he was until kind of the actual Death of Superman issue, which was number 75, I think. So I, I appreciated that. I liked that they kept that in there. Uh, another thing that I liked in the movie was the Wonder Woman segment where she goes head-to-head -head with Doomsday. Now, I do think this might have been added in there to capitalize on Wonder Woman's new newfound fame in the media, but I still liked it, although he did take her down. But then again, he took out practically the whole Justice League, even the heavy hitters, so to speak. Uh, one thing, though, that I did... I thought neat this this movie needed was the iconic kiss scene between Superman and Lois. Uh, I remember reading the comics and it like I said it was iconic. I've seen that picture I don't know how many times over the over the years. 
but like I said, the final battle that they have in this is is epic. It really is. And like I said, if Batman vs. Superman had followed through with this, I really think it would have been a fantastic movie it, instead of just kind of mediocre. I mean, there is so much damage done. And I mean, you really see how high the stakes are in this. You know, Superman is not able to take him down like you think he would be able to. You know, it really it really shows just how much he has to give up in order to actually, you know, take him down in the end. So, anyways, like I said, I'm a big fan of this movie. It's streaming now on DC Universe, so you might as... If you're not a member of DC Universe, you might want to sign up. I do think Reign of the Superman is going to be on there as well at some point. Um, it, you know, it does come out next week, but I'm sure it won't be on the DC Universe streaming site for a little bit. But there's a ton of other stuff to watch on there at this point. It's kind of a good jumping on point, so I would recommend checking that one out. So, anyways, if you liked the review, you want to hear more... Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'm doing daily uploads this week and trying to stick to that schedule. And this week on Tuesday is when Reign of the Superman comes out. So I'll be giving a follow-up review on that one as well. So thanks for, for, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.